in the wake of last Sunday's show for the next paradigm shift over at Blog Talk Radio, I've gotten a lot of feedback from people who really resonated with the content of that show. So um, I've decided to kind of recap that for YouTube um, because it kind of goes more in depth to the alien connection to um, human history and, um, and the human future. And a lot of people are having um, various interactions with um, ETs, if you will, either astrally or personally. Um, people are remembering past lives um, and realizing that they were born here in this life with some kind of a plan that is now becoming apparent to them. And there seems to be a real tidal wave of people that are awakening to some sort of um, preordained mission to accomplish during this particular phase of human development. So some of the things that I'd like to um, present here for YouTube is uh, some things that I've learned about um, my particular history, um, because it surprises me probably as much as anybody else. Um, that I believe it is probably even a bigger surprise to some people who've known me for a long time. Um, but it wouldn't surprise anybody that's known me lately. Um, I uh, have met a new friend who uh, is actually quite a gifted channeler who had the unique uh, experience of being taken and shown past lives and reminded of who he was before he incarnated here in this life. Uh, this man was born an open channel um, basically in a an ascended form already in terms of his ability to feel um, the energetics of the cosmic environment, the environment of the earth, and um, the radio frequencies of the thoughts, intentions, and emotions of the people around him. Um, this has been a curse and a blessing, and um, his cross to bear. But the reason or the advantage for having these kinds of abilities is just now really coming into its own. Um, and he and I meeting up and realizing that we potentiate one another. Uh, his ability um, to contact beings that are of other dimensions or even just non-local to where we are sitting on the surface of the earth who may be in a spaceship above the earth. Um, and in some cases that was actually true. Um, he has been able to ascertain some of my own record that I can't remember, but as he accesses individuals that were involved with me before I incarnated here, I immediately recognized the energy, if you will, of the, uh, of the individuals and even some of the terminology that I found to be quite personal <laughs> to my own um, family history and uh, in that he channeled words that uh, were familiar in my little group in Ellis land um, but that he had never channeled before and it was uh, such a unique sort of a thing that it, it really tipped the scales as to whether or not I find this whole channeling thing to be entirely believable and I was actually very inclined to believe it before I met him but um, watching him channel different entities um, and seeing the effect that it has on him and the information that comes to me and the way that it impacts upon me um, let's just say resonates with me in a way that it's so familiar that I can't uh, deny it on the one hand on the other hand the information is so pristine to what I know about uh, ancient human history um, I have the advantage of having made uh, mythology a priority in my learning from an early age, it was uh, an interest my father had, and uh, the whole ET connection, um, you know, different books that he read, like Chariots of the Gods and um, Ancient Astronauts, uh, Bilikovsky, um, Johnny Keel, East of Eden, um, the, the list goes on and on and on. Um, a lot of pictographic representation of highly technologically in advanced. Um, humanoids interacting with humans who clearly worship them as gods and uh, considered these beings to be um, superior to themselves, which was actually a mistake. Um, it was really in the innocence of human evolution um, being born here blind and not really realizing what your soul was before it incarnated here um, put humans in a unique 
position of actually being told things that weren't true and having no memory of anything to compare it to, we really fell for the con and um, and have spent many eons dealing with the fallout of believing in a lie. And um, I think that's what people resonated with the most was finding out what that backstory was, what happened to whom, when, and why, and what was done consequent to the so-called fall, and where are we now uh, with regard to all of that. And um, so I'll just give you a brief history of the world, part one, <laughs> and, and not go into all the depth that is there, but just kind of the cursory thumbnail sketch that I gave on uh, Sunday's show. Uh, essentially, what had happened was there was a child born on this planet that was blue in color, um, cyanotic. I guess a lot of people would have thought um, blue for health reasons, maybe a hole in the heart or something like that, but all efforts to heal this child failed. And some people made the mistake of thinking that the color itself made the child special, um, an omen of the gods of some sort, and they treated the child as though it were um, special, greater than other individuals. And this is the classic blunder that's been made on other planets at different times in their own evolution. And um, the idea that something about the appearance of an individual or a specific gift that an individual has that is somehow more useful at some current uh, stage of evolution, um, you know, by for whatever reason, um, the the tendency to elevate some certain class above another is a is a total setup uh, where inequality then becomes a um, a poison, a virus, a toxin that will pollute an entire society and derail it from a natural evolution. Had not the faulty presumption been made that something that is different about an individual makes them better than everybody else. That is never true. We're designed, we're created by, um, by a singular entity, by a singular intention, with an energy that's the same in all of us. There, it, it is completely impossible that there be any greater than another. But as long as any of us believes that that's possible, then we subjugate ourselves into being enslaved by a lie that we told ourselves. Unfortunately for humans, that lie was reinforced by beings that knew that we had deluded ourselves into thinking that this blue baby was a god. And we had showered so much prestige and privilege on this individual that the guardians who were set around this world to watch us evolve um, unmolested, hopefully, uh, became tempted by uh, the love and adoration and gifts and um, prestige, if you will, celebrity showered on this individual just for being physically different. Um, if you're looking at human beings and you're reptilian, uh, it's not hard to imagine how the reptilians who were part of the contingent watching over this world were tempted to say, hey, we could go down there and uh, be worshipped as gods. I mean, clearly we're very different looking and they'll go for that. They'll fall for that. And we did. They came down here clearly more technologically advanced than we were, taught us a lot of things that we would have learned eventually, but they brought that here as um, their kind of evidence that they were greater than we were and kind of reinforcing the illusion that... Um, that we were less than they were, but in reality we have vast metaphysical powers if only we are cognizant of them. And off and on throughout human history there have been those human beings who did become cognizant of their own metaphysical powers. Uh, unfortunately the powers that be um, demonized those who were connected enough to the planet and connected enough to the cosmic frequencies in creation to actually um, manifest telekinetic powers, telep telepathic um, mind melding, um, alchemy, and, and different other kinds of gifts that are possible. And um, 
such people were branded as witches um, and hunted down and killed. Um, in fact, it was the natural state for human beings on this planet to be somewhat magical, um, in fact, to be quite magical. But the priesthoods uh, that had the energy masters um, and the priestesses are around the world uh, very many eons ago were hunted down by the Anunnaki who wanted to enslave this world uh, with the con that they were better than everybody else. And those amongst us who knew better were hunted down and killed and virtually eradicated. Unfortunately for them, it is the natural proclivity of human beings to evolve these abilities. And in the absence of a con to tell you that you can't do something, many humans are inclined to try the seemingly impossible and pull it off. And the more of us that try um, the seemingly impossible, um, people such as myself will actually dare ever more impossible things. Um, just through strength of thought and intention and before you know it um, you know you have a housewife in from Nevada turned nurse turned business professional calling lightning down from the sky <laughs> and, and, and doing other things that uh, once upon a time would have gotten her branded a witch and I've actually been encountered by somebody close to me who said that he was not sure whether I was a heretic or a witch but he was not going to hang out to find out how this was going to turn out for me and um, and then moved off of that dime to eventually say that I was crazy for thinking that any of these things were possible and um, he was not going to stand by and watch my demise fortunately for me um, I'm not doing crazy alone there's a lot of you who are resonating um, with the backstory of human history who maybe even personally remember past lives trying to work covertly to recapture um, the human consciousness and awaken people to their own natural proclivities and um, and give people what they needed to uh, to rise up in consciousness to rise up and out of the slavery uh, out from under uh, what the powers that be what the Anunnaki have set up on this world in terms of really dumbed down sciences and um, religions so full of lies and superstitions that they don't serve humanity in the slightest. They only serve to frighten. And um, it is through the po propagation of fear um, making eternal beings believe that their souls can be tormented forever or even extinguished um, if uh, they don't obey, if they don't please these Anunnaki gods, um, what are termed in the Old Testament the Elohim, which translates pretty directly from the Hebrew um, in one of two ways, uh, sky gods or powers that be. Uh, those were used interchangeably, and, and now that, that you know uh, kind of what happened in the exploit uh, exploitation of this world, you know why they were called that and why it's appropriate even to this day uh, that human beings pretty much brand the Bilderbergs and uh, their minions as the powers that be because they do have this world under control and have had it under control for a very long time however that control is falling apart um, in fact they're the ones that blew their own control after spending eons of patiently devising a plan to enslave an entire world their own greed and avarice got out of control and they tanked the world economy and they killed the golden goose which is the American middle class and now that they've turned beggars uh, out of, uh, it turned us all into beggars they have nobody to fleece anymore and uh, they have uh, nothing really left themselves except to fight over what little bits and pieces of power are left here and there scattered around the planet and uh, to point fingers and blame, you know, whose who's, uh, cadre of, of minions failed, who, who didn't do their job, who was in charge of this and who was in charge of that and how could this happen. And um, the infighting is going to be endless and they have taken their eye off the ball. And uh, in fact, they deflated the ball that they were trying to take from the rest of us, which was basically the wealth of the world and um, just to inflate their own egos and say that they managed to enslave and con an entire planet 
of divine beings with almighty powers that could have at any time ended their own slavery. You know, and how clever they must be that they fooled us all into thinking that we were something less than what we were. But reality is is that we actually started that game and we have to step up and own our part of setting ourselves up for our own con even though ours was an innocent mistake and theirs was not. The fact of the matter is um, that we created class separation by elevating someone amongst ourselves above the others and we can't do that. We have to always stand in the affirmation that we are equal. Each is as deserving of the abundance offered by this universe and this planet as every other individual. There can be nothing withstanding that other than intentions. The only thing that separates any of us is the quality of our intentions. Those of us who um, have equality in our hearts and who want abundance for everybody to be shared uh, will be known by their own characters and those who are out for themselves who really don't care what happens to everybody else as long as they get theirs or even get more than everybody else that somehow their ego needs that um, they will take themselves out of the gene pool as it were they're not ready to ascend and where we're going in the galactic north is not going to be very conducive to those of the lower vibrations and by lower vibrations I mean those who are channeling negative emotions who are self-serving who become energy sinks for the rest of us they want and, and, and they're willing to take to get their wants met and that is the lower vibrations that is the lowest level of sentient existence it is only by realizing that 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 this is a circuit that we all form together and by feeding the circuit we are fed and and so when your intentions are 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 out going and uh, as concentrated on the well-being of everybody around you um, as as having some some kind of responsibility to realizing that you got to take care of your own needs as well the fact of the matter is is if you stay completely other focused your needs are taken care of automatically it, it really is the we reaping and sowing um, of karma that was taught in the Bible, that's taught in Eastern philosophies and, and other philosophies around this planet. I mean, there are certain rules of energy that are um, not mutable. And, um, you know, uh, good intentions will, will, will be met with, with good rewards, good returns. It's just the way power flows. And um, I just wanted to kind of encapsulate um, that message that um, once upon a time, this world did have guardians of, um, of, of extraterrestrials um, supposedly here to ensure that uh, human evolution took place um, you know along a natural course and those that were charged with our uh, caretaking um, really just all I needed to do was watch and make sure that we weren't invaded from without and lo and behold we were and they actually joined the enemy as it were and um, and there has been a um, thousands and thousands of years of concerted effort and wars fought uh, between the Anunnaki and um, and the guardians that they defected from. We know those guardians now as the Federation of Star Nations, um, the Galactic Federation, etc., etc., etc. The fact of the matter is, is this planet is being heavily engaged by extraterrestrials has always been under the tutelage of extraterrestrials who were committed to non-interference but that a contingent of them did interfere has created a problem for the entire galaxy um, the um, the wrongs that were committed on this planet and the suffering um, that has been caused um, by the taking of resources through the exploitation of people um, actually ricocheted throughout um, the galaxy and actually caused other worlds to suddenly experience fear and doubt in one another and begin to treat one another as uh, as if um, they couldn't be trusted and that lack of trust in ended up caused setting up dynamics where uh, worlds that had been at peace for eons and eons and eons of time all of a sudden were gearing up for war and um, um, 
the man that is helping me now actually became an emissary going around uh, the different uh, star systems around this galaxy and telling them that what was being channeled into their world was actually something a wave of energy that, that Earth was ground zero for. And, and to get them to understand that um, their doubts and their fears really were not native to their own world and nobody on their planet really deserved to, um, to be subject to, subjected to doubt and being treated as if they could not be trusted um, that really you needed to let prior history determine current reality and not let this wave of emotion uh, uh, that was bouncing out from earth um, affect how they were going to continue e evolving into the future and um, that effort went on through the 90s um, and uh, a lot of different um, extraterrestrial nations now are involved in kind of watching the mop-up go, uh, you know, uh, be expedited here on, on Earth. Uh, the Anunnaki were a species, um, as I understand it, from uh, from the Pleiadian system. Um, I'm not sure that that's correct, but uh, there seems to be some culpability um, for what happened with the Pleiadians and. They are stepping up to the plate and helping clean up the mess, and, and they are, in fact, the species that is most represented in the cleanup effort on Earth today. And I know that my fifth dimensional self is Pleiadian, and um, <laughs> and uh, I rather suspect that I have been on this Earth from that fifth dimensional um, involvement more than once. But definitely, this time, um, I. I am able to talk to three crewmen that were close friends of mine through um, through my friend Greg and um, no, no doubt about it they know me and I know them that we are kindred spirits and um, and so they tell me that um, that I was a, a heck of a warrior and I, I believe it I, I was born here a woman but I've had a lot of brass and I've always since I was a small child felt like that I was the the schoolyard guardian um, protect everybody from the bullies um, no matter how big and how old uh, you know what grade the bully was in um, if, if weaker children were being picked on um, then I was there to to settle the score and make sure that it stopped if I couldn't use intimidation I would use brute force and so I was a little girl that was often in trouble with the principal um, but when I would tell them why you know I had gotten um, into the altercation, you know, typically I didn't get in trouble, the, the other, the, the troublemaker did. Um, and I was kind of born with that spirit, and, um, and, uh, and I have always been a fierce competitor, mostly with myself, but um, uh, kind of a, a lousy winner, if you will. Uh, I always thought it was the Irish side of me that would gloat over a good win, um, but I realize now my Pleiadian buddies are of the same ilk, and um, you know, warriors and pride seem to go together. When when you work hard for a win, under dangerous circumstances, then I I, I think we get the attitude that we kind of deserve to slap each other on the back and say good job, and you know, have a have a beer and enjoy it. And uh, that's kind of been the personality that I've brought here onto this planet. Um, I believe that I came here for a fight. Um, and I don't think that anybody could be more surprised than I am um, to wake up at uh, 50 years old and find that the fight has taken care of itself. The Dark Ones have shot themselves in the foot, they screwed the pooch, <laughs> they queered their own deal, and so we're in mop-up. Um, so whatever fight it was I came down here for, I don't need to fight it. So. Um, so I'm going to switch hats and um, and move to a more nurturing side of myself. Um, I did become a mother of five souls on this earth and found a side of myself that wasn't really natural to who I was when I was born here. Um, the the not so tough side, that mother side, that nurturing side that um, has never felt more complete than by holding a baby in my arms and looking into those eyes and connecting. And, and seeing that connection is two-way, that the baby is just as dependent on that connection as I am in that love chain of energy, that exchange that completes us both. And, um, and I see now that what I want to do going forward is say the right thing to get the light to go on between all of you 
with one another and and with me that that you hear just exactly what it is that you need to hear to justify everything that you believed or felt might be true or the dreams that you've had or or the experiences um, whether it's recalling past lives or or having information channeled to you um, or being born or arriving at this time in this age realizing that you have a burning desire to do something technological or to do something about sustainability about cleaning this world up about making communities that are more symbiotic with one another and, and the earth that they exist in and um, I mean the thrust to bring humanity back in connection with nature is overwhelming um, and technology is not a bad thing it just needs to be a healthier thing and uh, that's what I've brought here to um, to the color of ascension is um, technology that I knew before I came here as my Pleiadian self and part of me believes that it's somewhat of a gift offering uh, a peace offering if you will for what it was that my people participated in um, you know and I, I don't know exactly what transpired perhaps it was the Pleiadians job to keep the Anunnaki at bay or, or to make sure that something like that didn't happen I know that the history books tell us that only a third of the guardians that were uh, appointed to watch over this world defected um, I think the other two-thirds were just caught completely by surprise um, that such a thing could even be thinkable was unthinkable I, 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 the whole thing uh, there was no contingency plan for it um, this particular um, solar system had a timer on it I mean there was an appointed amount of time that we would spend in certain phases of evolution and so anything that would ever go wrong would have an automatic timer set on it it could only go so far before we would evolve upwards towards the ultimate um, realization of returning to who and what it was that we were before we incarnated here um, however there was a lot of suffering going on and um, a lot of concerted efforts were made to come to earth and um, you know rescue operations um, to make reparations of what had gone so terribly wrong but the vibrations were too low and it took a long time for for, um, for our star families to figure out how to even come here and survive to do any kind of work um, whatsoever and I think ultimately what had to happen was that um, that human babies fetuses had to be um, uh, made vessels for uh, more ancient souls uh, who could come in here incarnate as humans and live amongst them and actually work covertly to, um, to kind of work human history towards the ultimate goal of human freedom and uh, awareness of the fact that this is a slave planet um, and in many ways kind of a dumping ground for um, for not the best intentioned of entities um, they have there's been a lot of protection provided um, f for the the riffraff if you will um, and humans have been caught in the middle in the fray and have been told such I mean long ago we were told that um, that the war that was being fought here was between principalities and powers that were beyond our recognition we just really didn't notice that there were wars being fought here on earth that had nothing to do with human relations and had everything to do with entities that were more advanced or more in touch with their own advancedness because humans have every capacity for tele uh, telepathic communication telekinetic manipulation mind over matter control um, to be able to work the elements um, we don't all acquire those abilities at the same rate of speed we will not all evolve at the same time uh, I just know that ultimately we came from the same thing and we're returning to the same thing and whatever pace each and every one of us does that will be the pace that's right for ourselves but I do know that that pace is being stepped up humans learn by example and as more of us appear on the world scene who are able to do miraculous things more of you will do miraculous things in like kind and that's why I am very public with what I'm doing right now I know that I am an example to others and um, and I also can serve to validate people who um, 
have been told that they're crazy or defective or you know being uh, shunned by their families, um, kicked out of their jobs for believing so-called crazy things like having extraterrestrial encounters or uh, astral planning and having entire alternate lives when other people are sleeping, in fact, when their own physical bodies are sleeping, you know, going off and fighting wars in other worlds or being emissaries somewhere else. I mean, it all seems impossibly um, uh, crazy, but the fact of the matter is, is that reality is crazy to compared to the craziness that we've been living in. And when I say the craziness we've been living in is that we've believed that we're something less than we really are. So what's more insane? believing a lie and living as if it's true or stepping into what's true and realizing you had lived a lie the fact of the matter is is that we are incredibly powerful beings with consciousness that we're, with the technical technological skill to have created magnetic bubbles within magnetic bubbles within magnetic bubbles we call them magnetospheres the earth has its and the sun has its and other star systems and um, and these actually serve to create a the passage of time uh, at a scale that's slow enough to actually savor experience that would not otherwise be possible um, human experience is kind of sandwiched in between cosmological experience and atomic experience and at those scales things are whipping along pretty fast and, but through the use of magnetic bubbles, you can actually slow things down, and that's kind of where we're at. We're in the middle between realities above and below. Um, and so the human drama actually plays out what is happening at the atomic scale and the cosmological scale. Um, it, it, it is necessary to accept and understand that all matter has awareness and much of it has sentient awareness um, because wherever there are two then there is a self-reference that affirms that I am and you are and therefore we are and so the I am is everything including ourselves um, all things are God and it was only the believing that that there could be less than perfection that allowed the experience of imperfection to actually manifest in and around us and as soon as we change our thinking that which manifests in and around us will change and that's where we're at we're at that period of grand awakening where we accept that we are something quite unlike what we were told and what we were well what we told ourselves and then uh, had that mistake reinforced and parent has passed that superstition to child and generation after generation has been poisoned with the idea that we are imperfect that we are less than and um, that there are others that are greater than we to whom we are at the mercy of and um, none of that is true none of that is true and, um, and as soon as we free ourselves from the lie we free ourselves to be our full potential and that is really the point of ascension is we cross that line in space where the lower energies can no longer manifest and be supported and we free ourselves from any possibility of the belief in a lie because we'll see the world and ourselves as they truly are as we truly are and um, we are probably very ill prepared for the grandeur of what that really is but I think we are all prepared to embrace equality at least the humans who are unmolested by the dark ones are uh, the sense of community between human beings is has always been a precious thing and we have always stayed true to our compassion itself uh, reaching out to those of us who are most harmed by whatever undeserved fate that befalls us by weather or, or war or, or what have you and that has been the divine spark that has remained ever alive in us and has kept us true to our ultimate selves and is the the truth of what really brings us to this point where we are ready to ascend those of us who have stayed in heart who have made love and compassion um, the central tenet of their being um, those people are ready for the truth uh, they 
have the higher vibrations already anchored within their soul and um, a and really it is the soul self that is an energetic part of our being that is eternal that soul self is energetic and it does have a frequency it does have a vibrational pattern and uh, negative emotions dampen your frequency and bring you into the lower vibrations and keep you from being ready for ascension um, it doesn't mean you'll be destroyed it just means you'll need more time to get used to thinking in a different way to manifesting positive expectations to living within a paradigm where the expectation that things will always work out well um, in fact believing in your own ability to to make things work out whichever way they're going to work out um, nobody has greater power than we do uh, when it comes to making things manifest in our world around ourselves there's no such thing as bad luck there is only the failure to expect the best so uh, we really are at a crossroads of taking responsibility for what's in our lives and realizing that that which we have is that which we expect to have and we will never have more or less than what we believe in <laughs> um, so really it's just about changing our attitudes our expectations and really solidifying our sense of community um, and not getting caught up in the lie that there's less than and greater than there's the deserving and the less deserving that there should be any kind of separation of class by color by beauty by wealth by by talent um, by whatever means we have to stop categorizing ourselves as less than and greater than as soon as we stop doing that then we rejoin the unity consciousness that we once had long long ago as we rejoin it this time though we bring with ourselves this very rich dichotomy of individuality that that will always be our own and the flavor that we bring to the collective and um, and it is the collective that we left once upon a time to incarnate here to experience a slowed pace to savor experience in slow motion and um, and enjoy a golden period um, where where the pace is slow enough to taste life. We lost that long ago and we're going pretty fast right now, but we're returning to that. Um, the technology, uh, antimatter physics, um, which is really just acoustical. Uh, physics, understanding the magnetic field as an acoustical wave in the aether, um, the kinds of technologies that work with nature will actually bring a period of ease to the human condition that um, is probably even greater than the last golden age, um, at least as great. Um, the difference between then and now is that we will know who and what we are and not be separated from uh, the majesty and the might and um, the miraculous things that we can do until we can do with our minds what we can do with technology we will utilize the technology for the benefit of those who are still evolving and growing um, but I can assure all of you that in just a few short years this planet will be anything but what it appears to be today and um, that seems to be a message that resonates with everybody they feel it um, and I, I just hope that uh, in listening to my messages that people realize not to fear it um, this has not taken anybody by surprise it was part of a grand plan every contingency has been thought of and we will make it through ascension in a safe and uh, honorable honoring way and um, we needn't fear not even the dark ones and you know they are their own problem they really are um, I mean it was a problem for us that we believe their shenanigans but really we need to regard them as the schoolyard bullies that they are um, they took advantage of us in a very innocent and um, blinded state and shame on them that's their karma they'll have to deal with and work out the rest of us are free to go this earth is done being a prison planet um, she has um, served above and beyond the pale um, at her own detriment uh, to her own uh, ley lines and meridians uh, all of that is in a state of repair um, through different 
mechanisms, um, and I know that um, those of us who are able will help the rest of you become uh, or evolve unity consciousness. Um, uh, kind of think of those of us who are really energy sensitive as being some kind of a, um, a radio tower for the rest of you to bounce your signals off of until until you can feel your own frequencies and the frequencies of those around you and um, and connect in your own right. Um, but just know that uh, your future is all about energy um, and connecting to energy, um, that your feelings are energy, your spirit, eternal self, your feeling self is energy. And... Um, that reality is not going to change. Your physical reality is going to change radically, um, as is life on this planet, even the, the mixture of our atmosphere. Um, Earth is getting ready to give birth to an enormous uh, amount of new life forms. It's already well underway, and it's been a matter of, of um, news on MSN just a week ago. Um, I've been watching it for over a year and have some clips on my YouTube channel. Um, I've just been so concentrated on other things I haven't really put a lot of that in there. But if you Google, you know, strange new creatures or, you know, new categories of species or however you want to do it, you will just come up with volumes and volumes and volumes of very strange looking new creatures. It's almost as if we're kind of re-entering a Jurassic slash Precambrian sort of era that is truly looking like it's going to be tropical <laughs> looking at the creatures that are um, that are disappearing on the world scene and a lot of extinct, extinct creatures that are reappearing on the world scene uh, as well uh, this is the, the life on this planet is about to become very very abundant um, we can say goodbye to deserts and um, uh, you know, lack of food supplies and, and things of that nature. Things are about to get really, really good. I know there's a lot of panic out there um, about uh, cosmologically what's going on and what that might mean. Just know that contingency plans are in place and that things are going to work out exactly as planned. And um, you needn't worry about anything. Just trust the process and be ready for anything. Because trust me, the unexpected is about to become the ordinary. Take care.